do another video on on some further work, some further modification work to the Sega Saturn. And this has really been born out of, of the conversation that went on in respect of the previous Saturn modding video that I did, which was entitled Saturn Sega Saturn Mod Fest. And it is specifically around the the region modding of a Sega Saturn. If you look at the previous video that I did, one of the things I alluded to was, was that even though that video was about about looking to uh, to add a mod chip uh, to a Sega Saturn to enable it to play backups, uh, one of the things that 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 the mod chip doesn't enable and doesn't sort out is the ability to have have your Saturn uh, region free. Now, obviously, the two mods are are totally separate and and you don't necessarily have to get a Saturn that is region free to use uh, backups and vice versa you can have a Saturn that's region free without having to worry about backups so these two separate mods are, are actually independent and now there are other ways of getting around the issue of, of your Saturn not being region free you can buy a, a cartridge, a converter cartridge but then if you start to use games that uh, require a RAM card, then you are uh, snookered unless you get one of the specific types of cartridges that act as a RAM card and, and a universal sort of converter. And if you're using backups, you can get around it by ensuring that the backup that you've got is of the same region as the Saturn that you have, have, um, have mod chipped. And you can get around that as well in respect of images. You can convert images to uh, the region that you want. So, so there's various ways to skin a cat in that respect. But I, I want to delve further into the region modding side. And, and the uh, the unfortunate thing with the Saturn is that you have to replace one of the main chips on the on the main on the main motherboard. Um, uh, the actual region encoding is based on a chip, so it's not a specifically easy thing to do. And I don't like messing around with surface mounted chips because I haven't got the equipment really to do that and I'll sort of go into that again, I'll sort of touch on that again as regards to uh, the technical stuff on this video but, but that's sort of by the by. Now uh, there is a YouTuber that approached me, a YouTuber called Gary Harris and I've got to say a massive thanks to Gaza. He he offered to, to send me a a region free uh, BIOS chip he was about to order one, they're not uh, specifically uh, dear, I think they're a couple of pounds, you can get them off a guy on the assembler forums and he was going to order one um, for himself anyway and he PM'd me and said look I'll, I'll order one for you if you want and I'll send it through to you which was absolutely fantastic I, and I, you know, hats off Gary for doing that, I really 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 do appreciate that, it's very nice of you to do that so what I'm going to do is I am going to strip the Saturn down. Now the Saturn I've got, I, now I don't have a heart attack, I'm not doing this to my Japanese original version Saturn. I've actually got a UK one, a black UK one, and it's a Model 1-1, one, one, Model 1-1, one, one, and I'm going to use that, because um, if it all goes tits up, then it doesn't really matter in that respect. I didn't really want to do this because it's a surface mounted chip uh, mod, I didn't want to do it on my Japanese one just in case it all goes wrong. So. I'm going to do it on my on my spare Saturn that I've got. Um, so I'm going to go through the process sort of briefly as regards to what I'm doing. I'm going to show you the various points that I go through that mod and hopefully show you the end of it all working and 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 functioning and and do what it needs to do. Um, there's nothing else really to say apart from uh, yeah, fingers crossed, guys. It all goes well, and I'll see you on the other side. Oh, right, uh, right, yeah, sorry, before I go, quickly before I go, now I will put this information in uh, the description of the video, there is a fair amount of information on the internet, certainly with regards to fitting guys for this specific chip, and, and I'll put a link to the site, but a guy called MM Monkey, which I'm sure uh, many of you will already be aware of and come across his website, there's a lot of real good stuff on there about modding, uh, there is a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually do this, um, so... I'll stick that into the into the description of the video so you can refer back to that. And um, yeah, I'll catch you in a bit. 
Right, so this is my uh, PAL Sega Saturn and it is a Model 1 Sega Saturn and the way you can tell that is by the oval buttons as you can see an oval button for the power and oval button there for the reset now in respect to the BIOS chip there's two types of BIOS chips one for the original uh, PCB board, uh, main board which is uh, defined as being VA0 that takes one type of BIOS chip and all the later revisions so VA1 through to VA whatever they went up to I think it went it went past sort of 12, 13, I think it might have gone up to 15 um, I think now uh, those later revisions take a, a different type of chip um, in respect of its size and and that's the one we're going to fit here. So we're going to fit a later, a later, a later type of BIOS chip, and that's not going to focus very well. There we go. That's the BIOS chip I'm going to put into the or onto the main board, and they're surface-mounted chips, um, quite sort of fiddly uh, to fit. As you can see, the sort of contact points on there. There's a lot of legs there, so we're going to go through that process of fitting this uh, onto the board, uh, removing the old one uh, first of all and then fitting the new one to make it region free which is obviously what we want to do here now the easiest way to find out what type of board revision you've got on your Sega Saturn is that if we turn this unit around I'm not sure how easy I'm going to be zooming in on that now you can actually do it by the serial number now if we look at the serial number the number that we're interested in is uh, we forget the two characters and some of the um, uh, some of the Saturns won't uh, won't have two characters there. They'll have one one uh, one alpha character, uh, but some will have two alpha characters. So we ignore the two alpha characters or the one alpha character. The uh, the first number, uh, which here is six, that relates to the year and manufacture. And the second number here, which is on this one, we've got three. I'm just going to keep losing the focus, unfortunately. You've got three that denotes the revision of the board so this is a VA3 board uh, so I know that, that that will require this type of chip this smaller type of uh, surface mounted chip so that's how you find out what what revision board you've got if you want to look for a BIOS because uh, obviously like I said you need to order the appropriate BIOS chip for your version of Saturn uh, so there's only two BIOS chips you can buy and it's as simple as the if it, if there was a a zero there, yeah, instead of the three, that would mean that it needs one type of uh, BIOS chip. If it's anything but a zero, and it will range from one through to nine, and then start moving to 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 alpha characters. So, A being ten. Uh, B being 11 etc 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 you only ever have one and the last six digits are actually the serial number of the machine itself so now we know which chip we need then we need to go ahead and fit it so so what I've done I've dismantled the whole unit and it's left me with the main board now on the so this is uh, this here is the front of the board. That's the back of the board. It's got the cartridge slot. On the on the VA zero boards, uh, the BIOS chip is actually here, sort of around in this area here. So it's on the top of the board. This is the top of the board. So it's round about here. But on this revision of board for the other type of chip, we have to turn the unit over. Try this one end without breaking anything. Turn it around, and it is that chip there, that baby there. And as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of legs there. Obviously, it's a fairly decent sized chip. Oh, this is really doing my head in this focusing. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take that chip off, and I'm going to replace it with uh, the new one, uh, which is that one there. Now, this one is slightly wider, but it should be the same length. So we need to be careful there with the with the alignment of the of the legs uh, to make sure that there's a decent contact point there. I don't particularly like doing these types of chips if I'm being honest because I haven't got all the appropriate um, 
uh, equipment to do it effectively shall I say as regards to using a reflow station to easily remove that chip and put the new one on which will guide uh, that's ready available on the internet actually advises you to cut the legs off of the existing chip to remove it instead of actually desoldering it I'm not going to do that I don't think I'm actually going to um, uh, properly remove the chip just in case something goes wrong and I need to put it back on I don't want to knacker this Saturn up even though it's a PAL version <laughs> and it's not the Japanese one but regardless I don't want to I don't want to knacker the chip up so I'm probably not going to cut it off I'm going to try and remove it properly but that's probably going to take me a hell of a lot more time because I haven't got the appropriate equipment to do that but but that's what I'm going to look to do so I'm going to remove the chip and start placing the new one back on and and we'll start refilming from there so I've managed to remove the original BIOS chip fairly quickly and easily actually I was quite surprised um, and I didn't actually smash the chip up as you, as you probably can't see because it's not focusing but all the legs are intact um, and I could reuse that if I need to uh, so I've cleaned up all the pads uh, where the chip used to uh, reside which is there you have to be careful with these chips as well because they've got a a, a sort of resin or or soft glue underneath to hold the chip on the on the board I suspect I'm not sure why they need that to be honest but but it's it's quite stiff to get the chip off you have to give it some leverage which isn't always the best thing you want to do on a circuit board to to sort of prise it off so you've got to make sure all the legs are disconnected before you do that because what you don't want to do is actually rip a pad off that is all nice and clean and it is all ready now for the new chip to be soldered on so i'm going to start doing that mod now so here we have the new chip mounted on the board and it's been given a, a power feed and and also ground feed as well and to be fair it was pretty straightforward to put that on the on the PCB once you know what you're doing you just take your time and apply appropriate amounts of solder to get all the pins on correctly and I've had to get my magnifying glass out just to make sure that everything's everything's in place with regards to contacting all the pins but obviously when we, you know I'm not going to know that until I connect everything up but um, I made a slight error of judgment on on and the amount of solder I'll put on that on that joint there is way too much but I can't be asked to get it off to be honest it doesn't look particularly pretty but it is uh, in effect bridging two pins off the chip so there had to be an amount of solder on there but I've obviously put too much I mean that, that's just terrific I'm quite embarrassed actually that I'm showing you guys this that but you know it's all stable everything's on there fine and and all the all the all the chip joints are nice and clean as you can see there and hopefully they're all making connection exactly the same on the back as well so hopefully that will and that will all fire up and it will work he says fingers crossed so i'm gonna get it back together again and and we'll give it a punt and see how we get on right so we have the uh pal sega saturn all all reassembled again with the uh, multi bios chip installed in the machine at the moment is is a Japanese disc and it is Virtua Fighter, as you can see by the Japanese writing. It actually says on it, made in Japan as well. So we'll fire this up and we'll see what it does. I've actually uh, put some tape, just for the purpose of this, I've actually put some tape on the switch here that um, and that picks up whether or not the, the, um, uh, the drive door is closed or not. So it's spinning up. So let's move over to the over to the screen, and it should boot up. There you go. So that's loading up a Japanese disc on on a UK PAL. Uh, Say Saturn. There you go. All working. Job done. So just to doubly prove that, what we'll do is we'll stop that and we'll put a UK disc in just to make sure we can read a UK disc I could actually try a US uh, disc as well but not much point really in fact I might just try that just to show it working right so this is a UK disc as you can see it says made in the EU so you'd expect this to work anyway but just to make sure that the mod chips were sorry not the mod chip to make sure the region 3 BIOS is working correctly so again, 
switch that on boot up and hopefully that will load up there you go so that's uh, loaded up an EU or European disc on a European machine which you'd expect to work anyway wouldn't you but that just proves that works and I'll actually go and get a US disc as well actually I might as well try the uh, try the full gambit right so again we've got a US disc here and again it's a UK power machine so a US version of Sega Rally we'll give that one a punt just spinning There you go. Not sure that loads up properly, but it will do. So there you have it. A fully region free Sega Saturn by replacing the uh, the main uh, region encoding chip or decoding chip that's on the on the main board. Hope you enjoyed the video guys and I'll speak to you again soon.